Evan Miyakawa, EvanMia.com is a he's a risen through the national ranks because of a lot of his analytics that he has when it comes to men's basketball, also including the portal. Baylor, of course, picking up uh, lately, Norshad Omir, plus also the young man from California, and the story today about Washington picking up uh, the great, right, Paul, for $2 million NIL. And we got asked Evan to come on and kind of give us an update of where everybody might be. Paul? Uh, Evan, uh, let's first talk about a guy who we know where he's going, and that's great. Osibor uh, follows his coach, uh, Danny Sprinkle, from Utah State to Washington. Uh, he's getting $2 million in NIL uh, deals, which I find refreshing to know. Uh, at least there's some some sunlight on that and it's, it's clarity. But uh, what kind of impact do you see for Washington, uh, especially given the fact that you're paying $2 million, you would expect for just one player at $2 million, you would, you would hope for a deep run into the postseason for the Huskies. Yeah, I mean, Gray Osibor is a fantastic player who's Mountain West Player of the Year, average... 17 points, nine boards per game there. If you're paying him $2 million, you're basically paying for him to be an All-American this season. That's the level that's expected. Um, I mean, the interesting part about this to me is that players who wait to commit later in the portal cycle end up demanding more money just because teams are more desperate for good players. So I think if, if Great had gone in the portal and committed a month ago, he probably wouldn't be above a million dollars. But because he waited so long, and he was recruited by some high, you know, high-profile programs like Kentucky, for example. Um, that just makes a huge difference for him. So I think he's going to be good. My analytical model is lower on him than what you'll see elsewhere. I think other people kind of have him as a consensus top ten transfer. For me, he's actually around fiftieth best in the portal. So I think that evaluation of two million dollars is, is uh, much higher than what his value actually will be. But he was a great player for Utah State. He took them to the tournament. Um, so, you know, I really hope he does well there. Uh, but $2 million for him uh, is just – is um, whether you like him or not, it's, it's pretty outstanding. Yeah, and you never really know with a lot of these figures, too. Sometimes we hear things, and it's, it's not always what it appears to be, but it is always interesting nonetheless to, to hear uh, some of the, the money figures that are thrown out there, Evan. I know you've got uh, your, your uh, rankings and, and how you've – uh, you know, viewed the transfer portal activity and whatnot. Obviously, Baylor comes in pretty high, not at the very top, but pretty high with what they've been able to do this offseason. Where would you kind of situate them in terms of the impact you feel has been made uh, nationally and in the Big 12? And, and, and what do you like about what Scott Drew and company have done thus far? The thing I like about Scott Drew and Baylor the last several years for transfers is they don't go for volume. They go for guys that are really going to fit in and be impact players for them. So I really like what they've done so far. You mentioned my transfer class rankings on my website at evanmia.com. I rank every team in terms of both their incoming transfer class, so looking at all the guys they brought in through the portal, but also in terms of overall transfer activity, which looks at both the guys you have coming in and the guys who are leaving. And Baylor ranks ninth or in the top 10 in both of those categories this offseason. And this is kind of what we've come to expect with Baylor. Every offseason, if they have holes, they typically plug it with really good guys. So I particularly really like Jeremy Roach from Duke and no Chad Ormier from Miami coming in. Those are two guys who I have ranked as top 30 transfers. I have no Chad Ormier in the top 10 transfers in the portal. And given that there's, you know, around 2000 guys in the portal this year, that's very good. Um, so I really like how both of those guys, both of those guys come in. They have as much experience as you possibly can get in the transfer portal. Both of them have played in a final four in the past. So when you add those guys to Baylor's returners along with some of their high-profile freshmen, I mean, this is a team that has everything that you would want. It has returning production. It has veterans to the portal. It has five-star talent uh, uh, coming out of high school. I really like the balance there for the squad. Evan, with what you said Scott Drew does in the portal uh, and, and, and what they've added, what they left, did they fill all the needs in your opinion? Uh, that's a good question. I think so. I mean, when you look at some of the way too early top 25 rankings that are out there, I consistently see Baylor in the top 10. I haven't crunched my own uh, with all the numbers just because it's so hard right now to figure out who's staying, who's leaving. There's a lot of assumptions made with those rankings. Uh, but in general, I think uh, Baylor has a strong squad again uh, next year. So I do think they've plugged all the holes. Certainly, you know, every team has more needs that they could fill. 
but at this point in time, I think they have all the all the pieces that they're going to need to potentially be a Final Four threat this season. Which team with a new coach has helped themselves the most? Uh, I think that would probably have to be uh, either Louisville or Michigan. So Louisville, um, with Pat Kelsey coming from Charleston, uh, obviously Louisville was not any good last year. I have Louisville right now ranked in the top three in terms of overall transfer activity. So they've been able to add a lot of good pieces to the portal. And then Dusty May at Michigan coming from Florida Atlantic. He's brought over some of his guys from FAU, but also has gotten some other uh, big names to the portal. Danny Wolf from, from Yale, for example, is going to be a big time scorer for them. So I think those are the two programs I would highlight as with new coaches making the biggest splash early. Kentucky is in the conversation as well. Obviously, Kentucky has an interesting situation in which uh, Mark Pope coming from BYU had exactly zero pieces returning uh, from Kentucky with all of their players deciding to transfer out. So he's had to build from scratch there, and I think he's done a really good job as well. Uh, among the Big 12, with all the incoming teams, we know what Arizona brings to the table. We know of the returning schools with Houston, Iowa State, KU, Baylor, all locked inside the top ten. It appears that way. Who would you say had the best of the year or off season among those teams? Uh, in terms of or in terms of Big Twelve schools uh, yeah. in the transfer portal. Yeah, how would you? Yeah, like I mentioned them. Some just had a lot of people back. Houston had a lot of people back. But of uh, when you talk about everything plus the portal, how would you rank them? I think Baylor has to be in the conversation. Um, I think they've really uh, solidified themselves. I have them as having the best incoming transfer class. Kansas definitely has to be in the conversation as well. Obviously, this was a bit of a letdown season for them, first round exit in the NCAA tournament. Um, and I have them as the best team in the Big 12 in terms of overall transfer activity rate uh, ranking. And that's with me being fairly pessimistic on some of the guys that they brought in. Uh, relative to some of the other rankings that you'll see out there. Um, but Kansas always does a good job of reloading. I really like the pieces that they've, they've gotten. Uh, Ryland Griffin is, is I think, they're going to be their best transfer. He was a really productive wing for Alabama in the Final Four. Um, so I think he's going to do well. Zeke Mayo is another one who's coming in for Bill Self. So it, Kansas really, it seems to me, like they never leave themselves lacking in the offseason, kind of regardless of what holes they need to fill. Um, I think Houston is really impressive, too. I mean, Houston isn't bringing in the biggest name transfers, uh, but so much of what Houston does is they retain important pieces. They bring back guys who are big cultural fits for them. So I think Houston's probably going to be a top five squad this year when we come around to the preseason again. Of the guys left in the transfer portal, who are you surprised has not committed just yet? Uh, I, honestly, I cannot say anything about why I'm surprised or not a guy can be in the portal just because at this day and age, it has everything to do with NIL and with agents and what they're being promised. Um, so I, I don't really think you can say surprise or not surprise because, you know, the longer that guys seem to stay in the portal, the more that they demand. Um, so, you know, for some of the guys who are waiting to commit, they might just be playing the long game there. Um, and with other guys, too, it's hard to say if they're actively looking to be recruited through the portal. Coleman Hawkins, for example, he's my top available transfer on the board right now from Illinois. But he, uh, based on what he said, would like to get drafted. So part of why he's still available is because he's going through the pre-draft process. And if he decides to come back, he could return to Illinois. He could go somewhere else. But we don't even know if those discussions are happening yet. So it's really hard to say. Yeah, I saw where he responded to the, the note about Osabor getting the money at Washington where he kind of did really like that kind of thing. So he's number one now on the list with the uh, Osabor off the list, or was he number one or ahead of him anyway? He was ahead of him anyway. And actually the funny thing about Coleman Hawkins is uh, when he first entered the portal, uh, he immediately slotted in uh, into my rankings as the second best transfer in this class with Kadari Richmond from Seton Hall, who's gone to St. John's being number one. So I made a post on Twitter about it said Colin Hawkins would be the number two transfer. And uh, he quote tweeted my tweet and said, number two, really? With a, a laughing emoji. He quickly deleted it. But clearly he thinks he's the best player in the portal and is probably looking for that kind of money as well. Evan, thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Evan Maya or Mia, M-I-Y-A on Twitter and also online. And it is just loaded with all sorts of numbers, stats, data, 
and analytics, Evan Miyakawa. We we knew him when he was just about just a wee just lad, like a wee, wee lad, and he's become now national. A lot of writers now refer to him and his information his, too. His 